Let's see what we get into around here. species here as you can see. We're awaiting the reptile venomous extraction show at 3 o'clock so everybody stay tuned. I'm here with a Florida native species, the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. Let's look at them. Those things look scary. I would not want to cross paths with those in the wild. of what's happening as Carl and I go through it with you. Then the two of us will be out at the end to answer any questions that you guys may pick up along the way. We collect or we harvest snake venom for the antivenom projects here in North America. What that means is the serum that you would be treated with at the hospital in the event that you were bitten by a venomous snake. Carl and I do not make that here. A large pharmaceutical or medical company makes that drug, but their project does begin with us and two other laboratories in the production of, or three other laboratories rather, in the production of whole snake venom. So they're going to take the venoms that you guys will see collected here today and they use them in a process called immunization. What that means is they take a little bit of venom, they dilute it way down with saline solution, and then inject it into a large host animal. In this country, that animal is either a horse or a sheep. It does not hurt them. They just create what is called an antibody response in their bloodstream. So our bodies do the same thing when we get the cold or the flu, just a body's way of protecting itself from anything that it deems foreign or dangerous. After a couple of months of those booster shots, the animal's blood is drawn off. Again, it does not hurt them, just like the big red bus for us. The antibody is then separated out from that blood, cleaned up, and that's what antivenom is. So when you go to the hospital with a snake bite, the drug that is saving your life at any hospital all around the world is horse or sheep antibody derived to the snake venoms of the snakes of that area. They also use snake venoms in a whole host of medical and physiological research. <laughs> that is why Carl and I own and handle all of these dangerous snakes. Probably enough to kill an adult. 
Coral snake venom contains powerful neurotoxins capable of disrupting a victim's ability to breathe. Symptoms, which include difficulty in swallowing, difficulty in speaking, droopy eyelids, called ptosis, and eventually respiratory failure, are sometimes delayed, not setting in for hours after a bite. When they do set in, they can be rapid and dramatic. The type of the southeastern United States. This snake is found throughout the coastal plain from eastern Texas to southeastern North Carolina and is still common in many of these areas. His close relatives, the northern copperhead, broad-banded copperhead, Osage, and Transpecos copperheads can be found from West Texas, parts of the Great Plains, up the Mississippi River Valley, and over a large part of the Appalachian Mountain chain. The snakes you see today are all southern copperheads. Copperhead bites, although almost never fatal, still involve swelling, significant pain, nausea, and sometimes tissue destruction. Antivenom is only used sometimes in copperhead envenomations. The southern copperhead produces a venom long sought after by researchers. This venom contains an important protein called contortrostatin. Contortrostatin inhibits platelet aggregation and cellular adhesion. Diamondback rattlesnakes are delicate captives. Extreme care is taken in handling these snakes both for safety and to ensure a supply of venom for antiserum. It's about the emblem of October's hood. Its real purpose is probably to confuse predators. Cobras are extremely dangerous. They have a very toxic venom and are capable of producing large quantities of it. The Asiatic and his close relative, the Indian Cobra, are still responsible for many snake bite deaths each year. Ranging over a large part of Southeast Asia, monocle cobra venom is used not only to make antivenom, but is currently being used in viral research, organ transplant work, neuromuscular chemistry, and the list goes on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There was a lot of awesome venomous reptiles, a lot of great information. Uh, I learned a few new things myself. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more content.